And so in, in addition to, so if we're kind of, you know, just um, thinking about how these patients are presenting to your clinic, they maybe they've got the ear fullness or, you know, the clog stuffiness. What other types of symptoms will they usually report to you? Well, are you talking about uh, eustachian tube patients in general or are you so, uh, obstructive or patchless? Yeah, eustachian tube in general, and then we can kind of like maybe separate them into, okay, which ones do you have a higher index of suspicion for patchless versus obstructive? So the patient, their principal complaint is typically ear fullness, oral fullness, and so we try to Im immediately separate that out. What kinds of problems is it causing? And on the obstructive side, they may have otitis media issues, they um, may have had actual infections or fluid or just negative pressure. They're barrow challenged, trouble with uh, rapid ambient pressure changes, uh, flights, diving. And uh, they, they uh, may have had a history of tympanic membrane retraction that's being uh, followed. They may have had a history of tympanostomy tubes as a young child. So that's the group that's the most common, uh, our standard, what's been traditionally called eustachian tube dysfunction, what I now like to call obstructive eustachian tube dysfunction. So we immediately try to sort those out by their history. And then in the process, I will always ask nowadays about autophony. Do you, do you ever have a situation where you have a pop or a click in your ear and it's, you're suddenly hearing your voice echoing, your breathings like Darth Vader's in your ear? And you'll be surprised at how many patients with obstructive dysfunction will also tell you, oh yeah, I've had that, uh, you know, I was exercising, it happened. So uh, we re really have to specifically ask about it. And do you feel like the popping and clicking, is that more specific to a patchless phenomenon because they're hearing their eustachian tube open? Is that is that basically what that popping and clicking is? Yes, that's absolutely right. Uh, and so when I hear a patient talking about popping and clicking as a big part of their complaint, it's much more likely to be patchless or possibly temporomandibular disorders and far less likely to be obstructive eustachian tube dysfunction. So that's a very common symptom that misleads us when they start talking about the popping and clicking. They are steering us to think about obstructive dysfunction when in fact it's probably patchless or temporomandibular disorder. In fact, popping and clicking is one of the questions on the eustachian tube dysfunction questionnaire, the seven questions. I, I did not participate in how that was developed, but uh, it was done very systematically. Uh, Ed McCool and Vijay Anand uh, did a great study there. But the focus groups of patients would frequently talk about that as a symptom of eustachian tube disorder. It turns out that the ETDQ7 cannot tell the difference between obstructive, patchless, or anything else that causes oral fullness, like temporomandibular disorder, TMD. Mm -hmm. So it's it's more of a questionnaire to just kind of assess the severity of the symptoms, would you say, to, so you can kind of follow things? It's an excellent tool for outcomes measures, uh, symptoms before and after treatment. Uh, so it's a very useful tool for that, but it's not diagnostic. It's not specific for ETD 